What's up, you guys? Welcome back to In Totality. I am your host, Megan Ashley. And uh, here we are, another week, another solo episode. I'm really excited to um, to talk about uh, what I feel like the Lord has kind of placed on my heart today. But before we get started, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. I don't want you to miss any episodes. I don't want you to miss any bonus content. I don't want you to miss any announcements, anything um, that we have going on over here within totality. So make sure you hit subscribe and turn your notifications on. Also, we are currently right now through my Patreon going through the book of Acts. Um, we are preparing our hearts and our minds for the Acts 242 conference that Jackie Hill Perry and I are hosting here in Atlanta, Georgia, October 25th and 26th. So if you haven't heard about it, I don't know where you've been, but I want you to invite you. I personally want to invite you to come and be a part of this amazing discipleship conference that we are having. It is going to be a conference like no other. It's going to be something that is just different and it's not what, um, you know, the normal conferences are like. Um, I think what sets this conference apart from other conferences, um, not all conferences, but some others. I just think that we really just have a heart to see people be discipled and to see people know um, the true and living God and to know his word and to really just be the church the way um, we see in the book of Acts to really be a part of a community of God-fearing people who um, want to spread the gospel and do what Christ commanded us to do, which is make disciples and 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 spread the gospel into all of her. So I'm really, really excited about the Acts 242 conference. And I pray that you are there. I pray that you bring a friend. I pray that your heart is prepared for all that God is going to do during this conference. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just really, really excited about that. And so if you... Um, if you're interested in going and maybe you'd have heard about it, maybe you just haven't made that final decision to get the tickets. Um, I pray that this is that last little push for you to actually go and buy the tickets. So if you go to the description below, you'll see the website and, um, and the link to get you right where you need to be to purchase the tickets. But I'm really excited to see everyone there. In the meantime, like I said, we're going through the book of Acts on my Patreon um, as a Bible study. Um, so yeah, if you want to join my Patreon, it's an amazing community of people who are really seeking to to know the Lord more and, and know his word more um, and to be there for one another um, the way Christ commands us to do. And so, um, yeah, so you'll get Bible studies. We have a book club. We are um, we have a docu-series, which is like a vlog um, that season three is getting ready to start really soon, which we're excited about that. Um, so you can get to see behind behind the scenes of my life and traveling and my kids and all the different things that I have going on. If you would like to be a part of that, the link will also be in the description. And so, yeah, those are just a little, some quick little announcements before we get into all the things. Um, but this, this week in particular has been, this past week has been really interesting for me. Um, I think uh, I, I, I want to be as, you guys know as transparent and vulnerable as as necessary um, with wisdom. And um, last year was just a really hard year for me for numerous reasons. And um, I think I developed this this thing since you know May of 2023. I think I've I've had this like laser focus where I have just been like super focused on the Lord and just super disciplined in certain ways and, you know, committing myself to his word, committing myself to prayer, all the things. And I, so I've just kind of had these like late, this like laser focus. And I think, um, coming out of a really hard season, I was really sensitive and maybe even so much like because I didn't trust myself um, fully to make better decisions, to be a good friend, to be a good mom, to be a good podcast host, all the things. I, I really struggled with a lot of those insecurities. And um, I think that zeal 
of coming to like a knowledge of the Lord, I was just like, okay, like I got to put my armor on every day. Like I know how to resist. I know how to, you know, replace thoughts. Like, I'm um, okay. If the enemy tries to tell me this, I can combat it with this and all the things. And last week, I think what I realized is that I've just been like, I realized the enemy was attacking, attacking in certain ways. And I think he just wore me down <laughs> to a point where what I felt like I had worked so hard to maintain and manage and control when it comes to, um, for a lot of you who don't know, I was diagnosed with bipolar depression and it's, it's a chemical imbalance and it, and it really can, um, you know, thoughts can cause you to go in so many different areas. Um, and because you have this imbalance, your moods can be off. Um, they can, they can be very extreme. You can be fine and then you cannot be fine. And, um, and so I think for the last year, like I said, I've just really have been focused on replacing thoughts and replacing like anything that might cause me to think negatively about myself or think negatively um, about certain situations or whatever. I've been really good at replacing those thoughts. But last week um, I felt I could feel, and as you mature in Christ and as you mature in your relationship with him, you kind of know these cycles of like spiritual warfare. You kind of know when like, okay, this isn't just <laughs> so-and-so getting on my nerves. This isn't just I'm tired. Like this is an act of warfare at this point because everything is <laughs> going amok. Um, and so I think for me last week, I got to a point of just being wore down. Like the enemy kind of just wore me down and I didn't resist. Like I didn't, I wasn't resisting certain thoughts and I wasn't resisting certain feelings. I was just kind of like leaning into it. Like, oh, I'm going to have an attitude today just because I want to, because I felt like I had the right. I've resisted for so long. Um, I've been doing so good, right? Um, so last week, yeah, I just felt like I was like, you know, I'm just going to lean into this, this attitude or this whatever. And, um, and in doing so, obviously I affected the people around me and um, the people around me are the people that I love the most. And it didn't feel good to do that. It didn't feel good. And, um, usually when I'm in, when I find myself in a place like that, where I've done something against what I know is right or what I know is better. Um, I usually beat myself up really, really bad. Um, I will just convince myself that God is angry at me. He's mad at me. He's going to punish me, um, for making a wrong decision. And he's going to, um, I'm going to have to work really hard to get back in his good graces. Um, that's something that has been a challenge for me. And when I was thinking about it, um, when I was, when I was going through this situation last week, um, those thoughts didn't come up. I didn't, I felt bad about not resisting the enemy and not making better decisions. Like I, I, I felt bad about how it impacted the people in my life. Um, that didn't feel good. And I, and I deeply regretted having impacted them in that type of way. I, you know, I didn't feel good about how, um, my lack of, discipline or my lack of even felt like the lack of strength. Like I honestly, it wasn't even this thing of, you know, I'm just like an air. I mean, no, I'll take that back. It was arrogant. It was prideful and arrogance was there, but it wasn't this thing of, it just felt like I couldn't, like I was so tired. Like I'm tired. I don't feel like, you know, resisting. I don't feel like thinking through a better option. I don't feel like putting I don't feel like being patient. I don't feel like being, you know, whatever. And so um, that part didn't feel good, knowing that I negatively impacted people that I love. That didn't feel good. But when I went to bed that night and I'm kind of going over things in my mind with the Lord, I, I never felt 
for, I mean, for the first time in a, I mean, that I could recognize, I didn't feel condemned. Like it, I didn't feel like he was mad at me. Um, and for the first time, I think I recognized that I was really free in him. And so, um, I, I looked up the scripture and this is in Galatians 5, 1. It says for freedom, uh, for freedom, Christ sets us free, stand firm then and don't submit again to the yoke of slavery. And this is Paul talking to, um, to the Galatians. He's writing a letter to them and he's telling them to be free and like stand firm and don't submit again to yoke of slavery. And we know that when we're in sin, we're, we are a slave to sin. Right. When we when we're not in Christ and we're in sin, we're a slave to it. And but because we're in Christ, that we're free. Right. The Bible says, I believe this is in John something, but who the son where Jesus says who the son says free is free. Indeed, like we are free in Christ. And so we don't have to we don't have to be bound to the slavery of sin because he paid it all on the cross. Right. And so I think when I was laying in my bed after going through the all the things that 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 week and that day, I realized like, oh, I'm free. So even though I've made a mistake, I'm free. I'm still free in you. I'm, I'm free to come to you and, and to ask for forgiveness and, and know that you love me. You know what I mean? And I think, I think the reason, or oh, I'll speak for myself and, and I pray that maybe, you know, someone can relate, but I feel like it's, it, it, it that condemnation feeling or feeling like that that guilt and shame and all of that stuff like the enemy really uses that <laughs> to his advantage and to put a a wedge i feel like between us and the lord um and i feel like well i'll just give some backstory so growing up i was raised by a single mom and my mom is the best and you guys have heard me talk about her a lot. Um, and she's just a really hard worker and she just always took care of me and always made sure I had and, you know, all the things. And although I had my mom very present in my life and very involved, um, the lack of my dad not being in, the, in my life has been a thing. Um, I mean, it's in my life, but he wasn't consistent. And um, I, I think I've started thinking through more of this um, <laughs> recently. And I think that it's very common to carry the context of your relationship with your parents into the context of your relationship with the Lord. Like how I receive love or identify with love or whatever from my parents, I think that shapes the way that I see how God loves me. And I started thinking through this and I just remember feeling with my dad um, that, you know, I felt like I, I had to be exceptional at things to, and, 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 and if I was exceptional at things, then they would maybe make him proud to be my dad and make him want to be around more. Um, and I think because I was never really exceptional at anything, like I wasn't an exceptional singer. I'm not an exceptional dancer. Um, I wasn't an exceptional student. Like I was an average student, B's and C's, occasionally some D's. Um, I, I, I was I never really felt great at anything. I feel like I was good at a lot of things, but I wasn't really great at anything. And so in not being great at anything, I think I I subconsciously told myself that because I'm not that great at anything, it justified um my dad not being around or involved or wanting to be around. And I think when you're a child, I think you're trying to find reason <laughs> with why are you not here? Why are you not at my birthdays? Why are you not at Christmas? Why are you not here? And I think I, I tried to just like trying to find reason so that it would feel less painful 
Um, so maybe because I'm not that great at these things, or maybe because I'm not um, getting the best grades, or maybe because, um, you know, I didn't clean my room and my mom was, my mom's having a hard time disciplining me or, you know, whatever. I was just coming up with these reasons so much so that I felt like I even, I even went to the extremes. Like I want to be really, 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 really good. And maybe in me being really, really good, you'll want me. Um, and then, okay, well, I'll just go to the extreme of rebelling, rebelling and I'll, and I'll be, I'll be really rebellious and disrespectful and, and reckless. And maybe you'll, you'll want to save me. Like maybe in me doing that, it will get your attention regardless if it's negative attention or not. And so like, I feel like that context of, of going through that um, and having that experience with my dad has carried into how I view my heavenly father's love for me. And so I all like, even even being you know saved and i got saved when i was young so even being saved i still carried this this these ideas and this shame into my relationship with the lord and so i would you know i just would beat myself up and i would you know blame myself for um yeah, for being human and making mistakes. And and in no way am I saying that we take advantage of of God's grace and his mercy and his kindness and his forgiveness. At all. I'm not saying that we do that at all, but we do have to realize and know his word and know that it's true. That like we have to we have to get to the point where when we hear uh, when we hear Romans 5, 8, where it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ still loved us, right? Christ, I'm sorry, Christ still died for us. When we hear Romans 5, 8, and when we hear John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? That whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Like when we, when we hear those things, we, we should get excited. When we hear those scriptures, it shouldn't be so common. Like I know forever 21, put it at the bottom of their bag. So you, you hear John three sixteen, and it's like, yeah, so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But it's like, think about that. Think about what you're saying. Wow. Like think about when you're, what you're saying when you, when you, when you read Romans 5, 8, like while we were yet sinners, Christ still died for us. Before I was even born, he knew all my mistakes. He knew all my, my shortcomings. He knew all my flaws. He knew all the ways that I would listen to him and all the ways that I would reject him. And yet he still died for me. Right. That there is a, there is a, assurance that we have in him and and regardless of whatever the enemy is trying to lie to you about and regardless of whatever the enemy was trying to lie to me about most of my life um i've come because i know more about god because i know more of his word because i've spent more time with him i believe that the reason why last week i didn't go into a spiral of a depression and really get into a dark place is because I know more now. I know more of his nature now. I I really believe that when he says that he loves me, I actually believe him. I actually believe that when I go to him with a sincere heart and ask for forgiveness, right, that I am forgiven and that he really has cleansed me of all unrighteousness and that he really loves me and that he really sees me. Like I, I believe him. Right. And so when I was laying in my bed before I was going to sleep, I didn't cry myself to sleep, although I was very disappointed in myself and disappointed in my actions in a lot of ways and all the things. But I I was so free in this conversation with the Lord to just be honest. And and I felt free to tell him, like, yeah, like, you know, I'm really you know, disappointed here and I'm sad here and, you know, I'm anxious a little here. And that freedom to just be honest, that freedom to just be, you know, and I, I feel like I've recognized that for the first time and maybe in a really long time is that 
there's so much freedom in him. There's so much freedom in being in, um, in a relationship with him. And I think, um, I think often of the prodigal son, that parable is just so beautiful to me because it, it is full of so many things, right? There's a lesson um, that we can learn from the father. There's a lesson that we can learn from the older son and the, and the, and the, the other son. Like there's so many lessons in it. But I thought, I thought about how when the prodigal son leaves and he takes his inheritance and he, and he leaves and he like blows his inheritance and he's, he finds himself, um, with the pigs basically, and they're eating better than him. And he, it dawns on him, like, you know, my, like he starts to remember what things were like when he was under the protection and care of his father. And he doesn't hesitate, but he goes home and he goes home. And then we see this picture of the father is like, kind of out on the porch waiting for him. You could kind of see like he's he's anticipating his son returning. He's looking out and as he sees his son, he starts to run towards him. But what was amazing to me is that the son goes home and knows that my dad is going to accept me. Do you know what I mean? Like my dad is going to to accept me home. And, and we see that the father runs towards him and he opens his arms and he embraces him. And not only does he embrace him, but that he fully restores him back to his full status. And I think that's the thing that really gets me is that he didn't, his father didn't just welcome him home and then make him have to earn his place again. But he got, he got all of it back. Like he got his full status back. He was back to being his son. And all the benefits that come along with that. And I think when I read that scripture, it excites me because, and it gives me so much <laughs> hope and, and it just shows the freedom that he really does love us. And that when we recognize that maybe we have fallen short or we recognize that maybe we've sinned or fallen short of God's standard, that we can get up and turn. We can get up. We can repent. We and can turn. get up and head home. Return back to the father whose arms are open and waiting for us to embrace us, to embrace us with love, to embrace us with forgiveness, to embrace us with empathy, compassion, and to restore us fully and to be reconciled fully back to him. And there is freedom in that because at the end of the day, we're all going to fall short at some point because we live in a fallen world. We live in a sinful world. We're in a, we're in a sinful nature, right? Because of what Adam decided and what Eve decided, right? This is that, this is the consequences to that. So we know that we're going to fall short. We know that we're going to sin. We know that we're going to, um, yeah, we just know that we're not going to, we're not going to be perfect. And I don't believe that the Lord is looking for perfection, but I think that. He's looking for, again, for us to turn back to him and to know that there's freedom in him. Living a life with Christ is not living a life of, I have to. Like the more that you know him, you don't, you're not bound by this law um, and, and or this like, pressure or that yoke that says, I have to, like this law, this law rigid relationship but the more that you love know him the more that you love him the more that you have fallen short gotten up repented and turned back to him and he continues to embrace you with open arms and loves you the more that you live your life as i get to i get to love him i get to serve him i get to pray i get to read my word i get to be kind i get to be um compassionate i get to be forgiving like i what an honor it is to do these things and it's freedom in it because uh, because although you know we we want to be as close to the standard and perfection that 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 of our example of christ he already knows you know what I mean? He knows that we're going to fall short. He knows. 
and 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 there's freedom and knowing that we can just return back to him. And I just think that that's that has been such a saving grace for me right now. It has been such a comfort for me right now is knowing that 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 the Lord loves you and that he cares and that I get to live this life out of gratitude and appreciation and not out of pressure to be perfect. You know what I mean? And, and there's so much, I'll just be honest. I feel like it's, there's a lot of um, pressure in this type of position um, to have a podcast, to have people, you know, look to you in a certain type of way or to be an influencer or to have influence or impact or whatever. It can feel very <laughs> strange going through this type of um experience going through this type of journey in life and um i think i have put more pressure on myself to be you know a certain way or whatever and i just think this week the lord has really freed me from a lot of unnecessary <laughs> burdens and yokes like I just do. Like I feel like I, I I don't know. It's it's the it's a weird not weird, but maybe I just haven't recognized it before. But there really is freedom in him and I just feel safe and secure and I feel loved and I feel seen by him. I I feel that he really does see me and love me and um and yeah i just reading through a lot of scripture and just meditating a lot on this um it's just taught me a lot and i i read this quote i don't know i think this is from the tony evans bible but this was really good to me but it said god's love for us didn't begin at our salvation but it is his love that is the foundation and the catalyst of our salvation. And so like the Lord isn't looking for you, like he loves you regardless if you choose him or not, <laughs> regardless if you're, if you do all the right things or do all the wrong things, like at the end of the day, nothing, the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. He loves us and his love for you started at the beginning. It didn't start at the beginning of you recognizing him or you saying yes to him, but from the beginning of time, like his love was there because he is love. And he has, he has done so many things to show his glory and his beauty and his wonder and his, um, matchlessness in just in the creation of our world. And it's because he loves us. Um, and he created all things are created through him and for him, even you, you were created for him. And, um, I think just knowing all of those things, knowing more of him has given me more liberation to live and to live with full gratitude, um, that he saved me. And I think if we really think about that, like he saved us, like he, he did all the really hard work now is it hard <laughs> yes it is it's not easy um there is spiritual warfare there is challenges there is suffering um but the more i read this word the more assurance i have in him to know that he loves me and that he cares for me and that he has plans to prosper me and not to harm me like i really do believe that and it's such a freeing thing to believe all of his nature and not just some of it, right? I think that we can get caught up in believing, like, I believe that you're just, but I don't believe that you're kind, or I believe that you are, that you love me, but I don't believe that you'll provide for me. And when we realize that because he is holy, all that he does is good. And because he loves us, yes, he will provide for us. Yes, he's kind to us. Yes, he's generous. Yes, he's merciful. Yes, he's gracious. Like, I think just knowing more of him, reading his word more has, has brought me so much peace. Um, and liberation 
And I pray that, um, I pray that for you guys too. I pray that the more that you are yearning to know him, the more that you are spending time with him, the more freedom you are experiencing in him. And, um, I just really, really, really enjoy <laughs> this awareness and, and this freedom, um, to just be in him and to know that he loves me and he has my back. And, um, it just allows you to live in, in such a freer way. Like you really do just feel honored and full of gratitude to do all the things that he commands you to do. It doesn't feel such like a burden. Like I got to do this, right? I got to do this. I got to do this. But it's like, wow, I get to do this, you know, and you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you to empower you to do the things because and that's that's even the bonus it's like you're not even doing this out of your own strength you're not even doing this by yourself you have the perfect helper to help you to lead you into all truth to lead you into righteousness to lead you and empower you to do all the things that god has called you to do and i think that that's beautiful and i think that it's freeing it's freeing we don't have to be bound to sin we are free and I think that, I don't know, I just really, I just, I don't know, I'm just really, really, really um, excited about that. But I wanted to give some, um, I was thinking through like, okay, I know people want practical pra practicality. So I want to give you some practical ways or just some ways that I kind of go about uh, the the honor and privilege it is to be in Christ and to live for him um and just balance living this life um and ways to just keep myself in that freedom and so um one thing that i'm really big at is a daily heart check um i think if anybody has been following me for any amount of time um one of my biggest things to ask is like how's your heart How's your heart right now? Where's your heart at right now? And so um, Psalms 139, 23 um, is something that my mom actually has been the person to, of course, tell me to pray um, often. But it says uh, Psalms 139, 23. Uh, it says, search, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. See if there is any offensive way in me. Lead me in the everlasting way. Um, one, I, one version says, uh, uh, I think it says, know my anxious thoughts. And I love that version because I have a lot of anxious thoughts. And so I'm always asking the Lord, like, hey, search my heart. You're the one who knows all, all of the the inner workings of my heart and you know my my thoughts so lord help me um search me and if there's anything that's not in you reveal it to me so that i can repent and turn from that and and move forward in ways that are pleasing to you and so that's one way that i'm always um I'm always praying um, because our hearts are deceitful, right? So I think it's really important that we know that and that we ask the Lord daily to search our hearts because our hearts will will deceive us and lie to us. And then the the, the second thing is repentance. I, I, repentance to me is a part of a daily practice because I think we don't know our hearts, right? Like we don't know we you know we're not aware of all the ways um, that we could possibly fall in short. So. Um, Acts 3, 19. Um, and I'm just trying to give y'all some scripture because I think scripture is important. <laughs> um, but it says, uh, I have it written down, but I'm trying to go to it in my actual Bible. Uh, Acts 3, 19. It says, uh, therefore, repent and turn back so that your sins may be wiped out, that seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus who has been appointed for you as the Messiah. And so. Um, so, yeah, repent <laughs> like it's that easy, like not that easy, but it's that simple repent and turn um, so the Lord can wipe your sins out. So I just think that that's a part of my um daily practices um and keeping myself in this freedom in christ right um the second thing is like identity and or the third thing i'm sorry is identity in christ like no know, knowing who i am in him and whose i am right knowing who i am and whose i am um 
And Galatians 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Um, and so I love this scripture because it's like, I'm not, I'm not the old me. I'm not, I'm not, I don't identify with the way that I lived when I was in the world. I am now new in Christ. And so he is my identity. And so even when I'm not even sure of all the ways of how to be the new me, I look to him and I look at his example and I rely on the Holy Spirit um, to, to ground me in that identity. And so um, Acts 3.19, or I'm sorry, Galatians 2.20 um, is just a really good scripture um, to remind yourself of that, that I've been crucified with Christ and it's not I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. Um, and so, yeah, uh, number four, avoiding temptations. And so temptations look differently for everybody. Um, my temptations may be different than yours. Um, my temptations typically come in, in thoughts, tempting the enemy, tempting me to think negatively, um, about myself or, or others or whatever. Um, and so, uh, if you go to first Corinthians 10, First Corinthians 10, 13. This is a really good scripture to, to arm yourself with. Um, but I'm just going to read it right here on my phone. But it says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. It's like, oh, wow. Like, okay, so you know what I could be tempted by and you won't allow me to be tempted by anything that's beyond what I can actually withstand, what I can actually bear. And you're going to, and you're going to provide me a way out. Like that is, that is good news. And <laughs> it's so encouraging and it gives you more freedom. So that way you're not, oh my gosh, like you're not so wound up and anxious about the, th the things that are going to tempt you. So I think that even in that, it, it, it frees you from this idea that, oh, because I'm in Christ, I'm never going to be tempted by anything. Um, when it, it very clearly tells us that, you know, we are, we are going to be tempted. We are going to be challenged. And, um, and we just, we just have to know that the Lord will provide a way out that he will, that he will help us, that he will not allow, um, temptation to come that we cannot, um, withstand or, 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 um, resist. And so I just think that that's good news. Um, two more things, uh, humility, uh, Philippians two, three through Four says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain, rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking um, to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Um, I think this is a practice that we really, in a heart posture that we really need to have is a heart of humility. Um, the Lord the Lord exalts the humble. You know what I mean? The Lord calls us to love our neighbor and consider them above ourselves. Like this is what the Lord calls us to do and, and, and how, and who he calls us to be. And so I think, I think having a heart of humility, I'm always praying that Lord, like give me a heart of humility, um, rid me of any arrogance and pride. Um, and, this 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 scripture helps put things in perspective when you feel like doing something um else that might be that might cause a negative reaction or response from people that you love so for example how i did not consider the people that I loved more than I considered my own feelings. I just wanted to be mad. I just wanted to be in a, in a funk. And I didn't, I didn't think about the impact that that might have on the people that I love. I'm just thinking about the impact <laughs> that these thoughts are having on me or the impact that this challenge or this, you know, whatever is having on me. I'm not thinking, I wasn't thinking about the people that I love. Um, but when I look at Philippians two, three through four, um, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition. And I believe that God's word is his word. I don't believe there's an exaggeration. I believe that it's true. So if it says do nothing, 
out of selfish ambition. I believe that it means nothing. I don't believe that it gives you a room to say some things, but no, nothing. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Always think of others. Always prefer them over yourself. And, and I think that this is a challenging word because it goes against everything that culture tells us we should do. Think about you. Do it for you. Put you first. It's your season. It's your time. It's your power. It's you. It's you, 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 you. You know, and the Bible clearly contradicts that. It clearly says do nothing out of selfish ambition. Nothing. Nothing. So I think that that's something that we should um, be mindful of and something that I try to make a practice out of praying and asking God to give me um, a heart of humility. Um, the very last thing is to stay great, uh, grateful. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, whatever word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Um, Tony Evans says that we should do all things with the Lord's reputation in mind. Um, and I think that it goes back to um, what I was saying when I worked at Chase and we weren't allowed to wear our uniforms outside of working hours um, because we were a representation of the company. And so if we decided to you know, get mad in a parking lot because somebody took our parking spot and we decided to go off, but we had that Chase uh, logo on, then we were a representation of the company. And we have to have that same type of mindset and that same type of attitude when it comes to how we show up in this world. Because if we are saying that we're Christians, then we represent him. And so everything that we do, we need to have him in mind. We have to have his reputation in mind because if we're image bearers, then this is their example of who he is, right? And so just trying to keep that in your mind, not in a pressure way, in a freeing way. Like I get to be an example of, of who he is. And if I'm mindful of that, then I have help the Holy Spirit to help me be that, um, to display that. And so, um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys those kind of six practical things that help me just live this balanced life in Christ and to be free in him. And so, um, and so, yeah, this week has just been, this past weeks have been, um, been very interesting, but I, as, as challenged as I have felt and even some suffering that I feel like I've endured, um, and spiritual warfare that I am still currently in, um, I am experiencing a new freedom in him. And it has given me um, just a lot of clarity. It's given me a lot of, um, yeah, clarity and just liberation. And so, yeah, um, that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I hope that, again, I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope that you kind of just hear my heart. Um, I don't ever believe in showing up and, you know, I got it all figured out. I don't. I have hard days. Um, I have hard weeks. I have hard moments. Uh, but I'm learning so much about God's nature and his consistency and his love. And it has been, like I said, just very freeing. And so um, I pray that all of you watching this, um, that the next time you spend some intimate time with the Lord is that he gives you a spirit of freedom in him and, and that he um, fills your heart with just joy and assurance that he loves you um, and that he's for you and that he um, was so gracious to uh, leave us the Holy Spirit to help us do all the things that he's called us to do and to be free in doing it. And before we get out of here, I want to give you guys a journal prompt. So I want you to just kind of go through maybe some of the same um, things that I was kind of questioning is like, what does freedom in Christ really mean? And what does it look like? Um, and how does the Bible help us be free in him? So what does freedom in Christ really mean? What does it look like? And how does the word of God help us be free in our relationship with Christ? Um, that's your journal prompt for this week. I pray that it blesses you and I pray that it it provides um, some really good intimate time with the Lord. 
And so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, please make sure you subscribe. Um, I would love to see you join my Patreon um, and go through Bible study with us as we go through the book of Acts. Um, I would love to see you at the Acts 242 conference again. And um, yeah, all the things. Love you guys. See you next time.